Okay, good morning, everyone. Good evening, wherever you are. Um, sorry about the delay getting in. And uh, Jeff and I have overcome. I'm not sure if it was his end or my end, but we can hear each other now. And I hope you can all hear us. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. How's things over there where you are? Uh, pretty good. Let me just uh, check and make sure it's streaming to my channel because I've got a prompt that says stream this to your audience. Uh, and it should already be streaming to my it is. audience. But... According okay. to my system, it is streaming to you. Okay. Let me. Uh... Yeah, you are live. Bitter Pill is live. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay, so I've got I've got three items on the agenda today that I'd like to talk about. Uh, obviously, the big one for you and I is TikTok. Uh, another one I wanted to talk about was Princess Kate. I don't know if you've been following that story. And then I'd like to talk about something a little bit more um, um, economy based. We're basically going to talk about the economy and uh, how that's changing. At the moment. Okay. Um, mm. And since we're talking about China US clashes anyway, um, maybe we could also talk about um, the position that China has taken with regard to uh, Israel and Palestine and you know, some, of, some of the things China has been doing to try and uh, uh, resolve the conflict and um, Challenge I'm very interested the in narrative. I'm very interested in how American media is viewing China's response to this. I can tell you how Chinese media is. So let's let's kick off with that. What's what's happening over there in terms of media uh, saying what is China doing? Uh, I haven't heard anything about the media uh, saying anything about what China is doing. So so uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, if there's been any coverage of it or not. Uh, I mean, there was uh, certainly very little coverage of uh, the ICJ uh, hearings on South Africa's case uh, charging Israel with genocide. There, there was next to no coverage of that in the American media. Maybe I can enlighten you on something else there as well. Did you know that the South Africa case has been expanded to cover Australia too? They've taken oh. the the leader of the prime minister, the uh, foreign affairs minister, the leader of the opposition, and the not the deputy leader of the opposition, but the defence minister of the opposition, to the same uh, to the ICC because the uh, the Australia signed up to the ICC for the same thing for being accessories to uh, genocide. Yeah, I, uh, I can't recall off the top of my head now, but I know there have been other countries that uh, have been added as well i think i think germany and uh mm -hmm. um yeah well i'm hearing about that because i obviously i, I follow australian news being an australian citizen um yeah let's, let, let's go straight on to this particular one um let's put this into a perspective uh Ugu. um there have been five ceasefire rev resolutions at the United Nations. Four of those, Russia and China have voted for because they mm -hmm. all had the words immediate ceasefire. Mm -hmm. China and Russia vetoed the immediate ceasefire resolution that the Americans proposed because it didn't say immediate ceasefire. They said, we believe in the principle of an immediate ceasefire Mm -hmm. and should work towards it. And China said, we're not having that. We want an immediate ceasefire. Unless we get the wording that says, this resolution provides for an immediate ceasefire, and anything beyond that is an international crime, then we're not going to have this. That is why yeah. China and Russia vetoed the ceasefire resolution. Uh, that's that's a, a fact. Uh, and and I, I mean, I haven't got it on, on hand at the moment, but if you go to read the resolution, and you can, it's online, very easy to find, uh, just search uh, UN resolution that China vetoed, then you'll find the resolution and read it. And it said, an immediate ceasefire while 
diplomatic negotiations continue. So they wanted diplomatic negotiations to continue to the point of an immediate ceasefire. And Russia has said, and China has said, no, we want an immediate ceasefire as the resolution. Not talking about an immediate ceasefire. We want the resolution to be the immediate ceasefire. That's why they vetoed mm -hmm. that. And okay. that's why they went ahead with the approval of the fall that the US vetoed. So what we're watching here is America rewording it so that they can say, look how evil China and Russia are. They won't accept an immediate ceasefire. Well, they want an immediate ceasefire and they will. Yeah, well, Russia's proposed an immediate ceasefire resolution uh, mm -hmm. and the US vetoed it. So yeah, I even had a chance to look at the uh, you know recent resolution. Um, but, oh, one thing that came to mind that I just thought I'd throw in because it was kind of interesting. You know who uh, was one of the few countries besides Ukraine that did not condemn the terrorist attack in Moscow the other day? Australia. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. I'll yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing was that two weeks ago, the U.S. government were putting out warnings to avoid uh, large groups uh, to its own people. Yeah. So clearly they knew something that was happening just before the election. And it seems, it seems that uh, the uh, attack might have been planned for a week or so before the election rather than a week after the Russian election. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I heard, so I haven't had a chance to look into the details, but I heard something about that there was some other plot that actually was, unlike probably what happened with the actual terrorist attack, that actually was um, you know, associated with ISIS or uh, some other terrorist group, and the FSB foiled that, right. uh, and that... Uh, that happened right after the all these warnings came out. Uh, so, so I guess it's not really clear whether the warnings were about the attack that actually happened or about one that uh, somebody tried to do previously. Uh, well, sure. you're an American, Jeff. Let let's let me ask you a question as a non-American. How is it that America can identify? And they've already done this. They've already identified who this was. They've said that they knew this was coming. How is that possible when they don't know anything about, for example, the Nord Stream and they didn't know 9-11 was coming? How, how are they getting so good at this? <laughs> well, they knew they knew Russia uh, bombed their own pipeline, right? <laughs> they knew that right they away. They they did. <laughs> yeah. um, did, do, do you think, yeah. I mean, the speculation here, uh, what Twitter is saying, the Twitterverse is saying that the um, the bombing in uh, Crocus, I think it was called, the, the theater in, in Russia, yeah. was uh, a, a CIA plot, a CIA uh, activity. What do you think about that allegation against your country? Well, I mean, you know, obviously, the, there's all kinds of um, terrorist attacks that Ukraine has carried out that foreign intelligence services seem to be have been involved in such as the mm. you know attacks on the crimea bridge yeah um and i'm blanking on w what else there was that there was evidence of foreign intelligence agency involvement um but um yeah trevor yeah, yeah, definitely paid for it <laughs> uh <laughs> probably um because I mean, we do know that at least four of the terrorists were fleeing toward Ukraine. They were apprehended just before they crossed into Ukraine. Uh, so mm -hmm. why would they be fleeing toward Ukraine if Ukraine was not involved? Because there are other countries, uh, such as Latvia, I guess, that are closer to Moscow than uh, Ukraine is. So Yeah. So, I mean, this is true. They don't know who, who bombed Nord Stream <laughs> exactly. and uh, within one hour. Well, I mean, maybe they did have prior information, but we know who set up ISIS. Uh, and there's probably a few um, a few people still connected to ISIS. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Israel has connections to ISIS, actually, too. Right. 
Yeah. Go on, let's go back to Israel. What are the what are the Israeli connections to ISIS? Um I I it's been a while since I've looked at it, so I, mm. I can't say much beyond that. I uh, can't really give you any details, but um, all right. Uh, okay. You know, they, they, uh, you know, they definitely supported ISIS's attacks on Syria, and of course they were attacking Syria as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't give you a lot of detail, any detail really beyond that. Richard Medhurst did a very good thing the other day that I watched. Um, I don't know if any of you, anyone watches Richard Medhurst. He's very, very well worth watching. Um, oh, definitely. Oh yeah, he he showed these six fronts that are, that are occurring here against. I mean, basically, this is a war of the Middle East against Israel, effectively. But uh, he says that Yemen is the only country that has actually come out, and, and Yemen is under the control of the Insal, not Insalar, uh, Ansar Allah, Ansar Allah, uh, and Ansar Allah are being called the Houthis, which is not right. correct, but. Uh, yeah. The Houthis do make up some of Ansar Allah, but Ansar Allah is a is a different thing altogether. It is uh, it may be led by Houthis, but they're not all Houthis. But um, well, isn't Houthi somebody's name though? Well, Houthi was an original leader, and there's a group of people who call themselves Houthis, and then there's a much larger group that were formed, including the Houthis, which is Ansar Allah. So um, the that's my understanding of it. I mean, I'm I, I'm not, I'm no expert in Middle East um, yeah. the makeup of the what they label the terrorist labels, um, it, but it seems like Yemen, the Yemeni people, are quite happy with Ansar Allah. The American and the Saudis are not happy with Ansar Allah. So it would be quite. Uh, it's an interesting thing that the uh, the United Nations passed a resolution uh, that said to to respect the sovereignty of Yemen the day before Biden and the UK, under Biden's leadership, uh, America and the UK bombed Yemen's sovereignty. So th there's something going on there that the, and the UN said, you know, with, uh, sorry, the US said with UN's approval, which is complete lie, a complete, you know, it's not often I can say that's a lie. I say, mm -hmm. That's a misunderstanding. That's misinformation. You know, that's not the truth. Biden told a complete lie. The White House said, acting on UN resolution, whatever it was, and I read UN resolution, and it said the 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 sovereignty of Yemen must be respected, mm -hmm. and the Yemen life as a Coast Guard would handle this. Next thing you know, America and the UK are bombing Yemen. So complete yeah. contradiction to the UN uh, request. Yeah, um, well, there are six uh, fronts. Yemen's uh, not taking it lying down. Uh, that they've been going out after U.S. and British ships mm -hmm. in the Indian Ocean, which is like a thousand miles away from Yemen. <laughs> so right. Well, they, they 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 don't really need to do that. They when this started, I think they were firing rocket launchers, or grenade launchers from the beach. And it, it wasn't that big a deal, uh, but it's got bigger, and uh, they, they're still saying Iran. Now, Hezbollah has come out and said that they're going to handle Israel on their own without Iran, uh, without yeah. Iran's assistance. Now, I don't, I don't know who Iran um, supports, uh, I, because I only read Western media. If you read Iranian media, they, they don't support Hezbollah, they don't support Hamas. They support the principles of, but they're not providing military assistance. But someone is, I guess. And then, of course, you've got the system where one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Well, I mean, I, I think I know where I stand on who's who. Um, yeah. Right. yeah. So, yes, uh, to respond to the ubiquitous question uh, no i do not condemn hamas and the first i condemn i wasn't hamas. asking <laughs> yeah i know you weren't yeah i um, i i don't condemn hamas either um i i, I think uh, anyone who thinks that happened in a vacuum is is either blind or stupid yeah or lying um or you know if they say that uh, mm -hmm. um 
But uh, China came out very strongly uh, at the ICJ hearings, where uh, the part of the hearings where they allowed representatives from every country, country who wanted to, to speak. Sorry, I just lost my power strip here. Let me grab that again. Okay. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Where, um, the Chinese ambassador to the United Nations was very strong. Yes. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, China has backed the right of Palestinians to use armed force against Israel. Um, and <laughs> they, you know, point out, you know, it, it's perfectly uh, legitimate under international law. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I forget what the UN resolution was. It was back in 1982. They basically said that. Uh, you know, any means of resisting military occupation, including armed struggle, is uh, permissible under yeah. international law. Uh, so, so they said that, and also I guess they recently met with uh, representatives of Hamas. Um, let's see. They they did they met with representatives of. Um, um, Palestine a few months ago yes. they had uh, the Palestinian leader here but Hamas is separate Hamas only represents the uh, that Gaza strip so Palestine right. is a different it's a it's a different state it's a it's a state that's recognized by the United Nations but not as a full country or a full nation um, right right um but yeah just recently mm -hmm. the Chinese foreign ministry met with uh, a leading Hamas official um and you know, they were uh, you know, full of praise for each other. So the representative from Hamas uh, praised the role that China plays in the Security Council, the United Nations, the ICJ, and in sending humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. And China, China the Chinese uh, representative, well, you can see it there, uh, affirmed the close relationship between the Palestinian and Chinese peoples, et cetera, right. and its support for Palestinian freedom and establishment of a state. Um, and this was the first meeting between Hamas and China uh, since the uh, since October seventh. But anyway, uh, I thought that was a pretty significant intervention from China. Um, What's interesting, a lot of people don't realize this, and certainly a lot of your country friends or country mates would would uh, argue about this. Um, China is one hundred percent um pro peace it's always been right. pro peace it's i mean people say oh but it invaded vietnam okay it, it invaded vietnam I mean, when you when you look at the people who are saying this i usually ask how old are you you know and, and they were they're 40 years old and they were born in 1982 or something like that and i said well it mm -hmm. happened before you were born what's happened since you were born that china has mm -hmm. done to to show their aggression uh, and uh, it's it's a regular thing that I go through, and you know, most of people that I talk to on things like Twitter and in my YouTube are younger than me. I'm 65 years old, so most of them are younger than me. And and when they're telling me these things, I say, well, you know, how old are you? When did China last do something? You know, even Tiananmen was well before many of the people who are on Twitter were even born. Right. So what what we can say about China is that whatever they have done in the past they're not doing it now china hasn't invaded anyone in your lifetime if china hasn't invaded anyone in your lifetime and one country has invaded many and it depending on how old they are it could be as many as a hundred countries uh, then you know you've got to look at this and say well who's telling you china is aggressive for the entire time, 100% of the time, China has been, the People's Republic of China has been in the United Nations. They have supported the two state solution for Palestine. Right now, it doesn't look like two states is the answer. It looks like one state is the answer. And that state yeah. must be a true democratic state with true representation for all. 
Now, yeah, I can't I, see that happening. You you can't see what? I can't see uh, I can't see that happening. As long as an Israel exists, I can only see more conflict. I I mean I I yeah, I, right. I hope for and, and yeah, I don't pray, but if I did, I'd pray for peace in the region. I'm watching children being slaughtered. I'm watching mothers crying over their babies. I'm watching fathers dragging kids from the rubble and running to the hospital with a, a clearly dead body in their hands. And you know, you watch this sort of thing. It's it's horrendous. It's horrific. But the bottom line is, it's got to stop. And China is saying that it's got to stop, and it's got to stop now. And the United Nations are not pulling the pulling their weight here. So uh, yeah. what needs to happen is there needs to be a resolution that we say, well, surely we can now remove the United States from the Security Council. If we remove the United States from the Security Council, all yeah. of this can stop in a second. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, on one hand, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to stop real soon uh, because uh, despite all the international pressure the u.s is still sending military aid to uh, gaza every or to, excuse me to israel every day uh they are not you know insisting that israel let uh, food in um and you know i, I guess uh, some countries have uh some western countries have stopped uh, certain aspects of support for Israel. Uh, Canada recently decided to stop sending them arms and decided, uh, I think Canada and several other countries decided to restore funding to uh, UNRWA, uh, mm. which the U.S. Congress just voted to continue not funding UNRWA, and they're, they're by far the uh, biggest funder, uh, by the way, if anyone doesn't know, that's the... Uh, UN, uh, I forget what it stands for, the, the UN agency that's devoted to providing uh, you know, aid to, um, to Palestine. Um, <laughs> well, there was allegations that UNRWA were providing more than just aid. They were providing intelligence um, through the fact that they could move around. Uh, they were yeah. providing intelligence to Hamas, and some members of UNRWA are actually also members of Hamas. That's the allegation. But there's yeah. been no evidence no to support that. Now, I'm not saying it's true or it's not true. It, it really doesn't matter to me whether it is true or isn't true. But if because of that, children, anyone is starving. I go yeah. back, being, being Chinese focused, I go back to the 1950s when China starved and people say Mao killed 30 million of his people. Well, he didn't. Uh, first of all, 30 million is a very spurious number. Secondly, right. that anybody who did die, died because China could not get imports because America embargoed them. And America are now doing it again. They're doing it to Venezuela. They do it to Iran. They're doing it to Cuba. They're doing it to People's Syria. Republic, Democratic Republic, uh, doing it to Syria. They're doing it to pretty pretty much North Korea is what I was trying to say there. And they're right, doing yeah. it to pretty much everyone they disagree with except China. Uh, but they are sanctioning and restricting China. They're just not not uh, doing it with food at the moment. They have restricted tomatoes from Xinjiang, but they're not, generally speaking, starving China at the moment. But they would if they thought that this could benefit them. They, that's exactly what they would do. But really, they want yeah. to sell their stuff to China. So we've got this situation where where America has been the cause of literally millions of deaths in the past through dozens of countries, certainly tens of countries, and they're yeah. doing it again with UNRWA because yeah, uh, they have allegations rather than any proof. Yeah, I, I, I read a figure that the U.S. is responsible for something like 20 million deaths around the world uh, through you know, ver uh, various military or economic measures uh, uh, over the past few decades. Um, and Ben Norton cited a statistic that uh, there's been something like 500 uh, military interventions by the U.S. of one sort or another. Either they invaded a country or they, you know, sent weapons to uh, one side of a conflict or, you know, they, uh, you know, plotted a coup or, or whatever. Uh, so about 500 of these in uh, U.S. history overall 
Half of them have taken place since the fall of the Soviet Union. Half of them. I'm going to give you a statistic here. Um, there are 196, I think, countries in the world. It might be 194. There's a couple of places that are not necessarily countries, like the Vatican is not a country, but it's a recognized yeah. state in the United Nations. And so there's a little bit of a dispute about the actual number, but the 196 is about right. Do you know how many of them um, America have not put boots on the ground in? I don't know, 10? <laughs> Three. Well, Liechtenstein was one, Andorra was another, and I can't remember the third one, but there's only three. Now, some of those, uh, like, for example, um, Australia, they've done it with the, uh, with the acceptance, invitation. Some of them are with invitation, uh, but many of them are not. They're invasion or occupation of some sort. Mm. Someone says five. I don't know. Yeah, that's and that's exactly. Few, I, I did this check. It's three. Yeah. <laughs> Seymour fact, yeah. Uh, it, it's un unless you know something I don't, but that that figure came from uh, a, a site that I do rely on. But it, I mean, there could be two others, and it, it may be that there's a couple that uh, a couple of countries that um, uh, are not countries now. So, for example, uh, Serbia, Croatia are countries now. Yugoslavia was a country. So things have changed over history. But uh, yeah, my understanding is it's only three. And I did have the names. Andorra was one. Liechtenstein was another. Luxembourg wasn't one of them. Uh, but it was, yeah. Even Switzerland, neutral Switzerland, has, has huh. had American boots on its ground. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, now this uh, anonymous has just put a great point up, which will segue us to the next one of the next points I was going to talk about. So let's move away from uh, conflict and death and destruction for a little while and talk about economics. The West can stop China now. Can't is what he meant. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, I was just about to say exactly that, can't. Um, interesting, Americans say can and can't, and English say can and can't. And it's, <laughs> it's one of those it. few things that when I was a teacher, I used to try and encourage my students. If they had American accents or preferred American accents, I never had a problem with that. But I always tell them can and can't are important because English listeners hear can't, and we don't hear it on the end. So that is too quiet for us. So when you say I can't, I sometimes think you can. <laughs> So I always teach my <laughs> students to say can, can't. Uh, anyway, that's another story. Um, this is a really interesting point because I wanted to talk about the G7 and the kind of competition that's happening between the G7 and BRICS. BRICS is now 11 countries, uh, sorry, 10 countries. It was supposed to be 11 and Argentina pulled out. Uh, so it's now 10 countries. Uh, the overall uh, GDP of BRICS has overtaken the G7. But here's right. the important here's the important point. Oh, it's someone, tomato and tomato, yeah. Potato, potato? I don't know. Um, let, let's move back to this. In the G7, of course, there are seven countries. Japan, Italy, UK, Germany, and France have all experienced recession. They're experiencing recession or they're in stagnation. They're, they're getting no growth. Those five countries are experiencing no growth. China, on its own, just one country, had more growth than those five countries combined last year. So yeah. something is going wrong with the G7. And then the other two countries, Canada and the U.S., Canada is the only country in the G7 that is actually showing growth. Now, in 2000, I think 2021, it actually, its growth receded, but that was COVID-related. 2022, right. 23, it's back. And C Canada is genuinely a growing economy, and it's the only genuine growing economy in the G7. And you mean China? Is, no. Canada is the only growing economy in the G7. America is growing, but their economy is not. 
what's happening yeah. in America is you're getting richer, uh, but your riches are being divided between a few hundred people and not between your people. Uh, you're not getting richer, Jeff, personally. Uh, and this is the no, problem in America. <laughs> are you? <laughs> no. No. The um, problem in America that, is... Go on. That reminds me, uh, we, we forgot to uh, finish up a point about uh, the, the Palestinian conflict, which is that, um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to stop that conflict soon enough to prevent some, you know, many more innocent people from being killed and uh, so on and so forth. However, uh, if you look at the military and economic situation, I mean, you know, Israel cannot continue this for very much longer. Um, their economy is being trashed. Uh, you know, there are, you know, like, I think it's a million or more people, uh, Israelis have left the country um, a lot of them have dual citizenship anyway. Um, you know, there's nobody living in the area around Gaza anymore. There's nobody living in the very north of Israel. Uh, and last I heard, those people are being put up in hotels at the expense of the, you know, considerable expense of the Israeli government. Uh, you know, uh, of course, Israel is engaged in this mass mobilization of hundreds of thousands of young men. Uh, they're no longer participating in the economy. Uh, the Yemeni blockade has been very effective. Um, Hezbollah is just wreaking havoc uh, with Israel in the Northern Front. And likewise, although obviously it has next to no uh, air defense, so it can't stop Israel from killing as many civilians as it wants, Hamas is also kicking Israel's ass in Gaza. Uh, so, and, and you know, just the, the you know the, the, what reminded me of this is just how the geopolitical situation is going. Uh, you know, China and Russia are growing in power and wealth and influence, and uh, the West is declining. Um, hmm. And that's uh, just indisputable at this point. So, you know, in the long run, you know, things are gonna work out for Palestine. I think uh, it's just that in the short run as was the case in a lot of other uh, places where you know, the, the U.S. lost, like Vietnam, uh, you know, before that happened, uh, they were able to kill a vast number of people. Um, mm. So that's going to happen here as well. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it's going to get even worse. But in the long run, I think we will have a Palestinian state. I'm fairly sure we will eventually. Um I put this comment up because this is where I was going with my commentary on what's happening in the G7. Uh, it's not just Niger, it's uh, Mali, Benin, and a few other countries. Uh, there is a wave of countries that are now kicking France and have kicked Italy and have kicked the Americans out of, of yeah. those countries. And what's actually happening is right now those countries are in a kind of conflict and they're, they're not dealing yet. I noticed uh, the one that I went to look at was Mali. Mali's GDP has shrunk in the last 12 months. Niger also has shrunk in the last 12 months. But if you go to other places and you look at in Africa countries like uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia and Tanzania and these kinds of countries are growing and they're growing quite rapidly why are they growing because they're growing doing business with china and Don't this control. is this is the major point to take out of it that china yeah. is still growing i saw a bloomberg report i actually made a video about this just the other day i saw a bloomberg report which said that china's exports are dropping and i thought that doesn't marry up to what i read when I read China's releases of figures during the two sessions just a couple of weeks ago, what was happening was the European Union, the United States, the UK, and Japan, China's shipping to those four, three, three countries and region has decreased. And it's decreased quite considerably to America. That's because of restrictions, American restrictions. What's happened in the UK, what's happened in the European Union, and what's happening in Japan, 
and also in South Korea, is that those countries are reducing their trade with China because they haven't got enough money to trade with China. They mm -hmm. they they can't afford to buy things that they need. So their their economy is recline, uh, declining. It's going to yeah. happen. What China has done is it's increased all of its trade 8% up. 8% up in exports and 6% up in imports. Now, that's not an indication of a declining economy. When your imports are going up and your exports are going up further, this is a great situation to be in. And everyone says China's declining because they're not dealing with America so much. What mm -hmm. they're doing is they're sending stuff to places such as Mexico. Mexico is the best example because it's the largest. They're sending stuff to Mexico, and Mexico are exporting to America. So the sales to America from Mexico have increased. America's imports from Mexico have increased superbly. They've, they've just gone up like a rocket. Now, what's happening there is China's sales to Mexico have gone up on the same scale. So in other words, you Americans are now buying made in China supplied by Mexico or supplied mm. by Ecuador or supplied by Paraguay. And you're buying from what used to be global South countries, underdeveloped countries, which are now in the process of entering a developed country or developing country phase. So these underdeveloped are turning into developing and America and some of the European countries are turning into declining nations. Uh, somebody yeah. put the comment up there and it's gone through there that it's based on interest, uh, sorry, inflation. America's GDP is based on things like the high cost of health, the high cost of the dollar, the high inflation and the high interest rates that you have compared to China. Our house mortgage interest rates in China are 3%. And wow. going down. They've gone down twice in the last 12 months. So they're likely to go down again because inflation is zero. They Literally, China has no additional expense. I was joking about this yesterday. I had a haircut a couple of weeks ago, looking great. And <laughs> it cost 15 RMB. That's $2 for a haircut. Wow. Well, you say, wow. 20 when here. I Sorry? 20 here. $20. That's cheap. Is that why you don't get your hair cut? <laughs> That's part of the reason. I mean, I started not doing it during COVID for obvious reasons. And uh, I mean, I, I guess I still, you know, yeah. still don't. I mean, well, my, my hair, my haircut has gone from um, 10 RMB when I arrived in China 19 years ago to 15 RMB a couple of weeks ago. So it's gone up by 50 percent. That's 20 years. It's not mm. bad. And my, yeah. my hairdresser did tell me, hairdresser, I won't call him a hairdresser, he's a barber. My barber did tell me that <clears throat> Chinese New Year next year, which is six, it's not six, it's eight months, ten months away. It's, it's, it's a year away, basically. He said, next year I'm going to put it up to 18 RMB. I mm. said, good on you. <laughs> he said, is that all right? Will you still come? Yeah, of course I will. But 18 RMB? Yes. 21 RMB would be $3. Okay. Well, you can afford That's that. what's happening <laughs> in the developing world. And what's happening in the developed world is your GDP is now based on false information, basically ghost right. information. So that's what I was going to say. Zambia is up. Mali is down. Canada is up. America is fraudulent. <laughs> that's the only way to yeah. describe America's GDP. Yeah. And the other five members of the G7 have all stagnated or even gone backwards. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, do we want to uh, turn our attention to the main topic of the evening now, since we've been going for 40 minutes and haven't gotten yeah. to it yet? This, the, the state of Arkansas, I used to call that Arkansas, forced a Chinese <laughs> company to sell up farmland <clears throat> yeah, China has now stopped buying wheat from America. In fact, the, the, there's a good reason behind the wheat problem. And, and that is that the price of wheat has dropped dramatically. And China has canceled 
hundreds of millions of tons of sales of wheat, purchases of wheat, because it's cheaper to pay the penalty on those contracts and rebuy them at a new price. So that's what's happening mm. with the wheat. It's uh, And they've done the same to Australia. They're going to still buy it, and they'll still buy it at the international market price. But the international market price has reduced so much that it's cheaper to cancel the deal, pay the penalty, and reorder the wheat. That's what's going to happen with the wheat. Um, uh, wow. And they go 12 to $18. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Yes. Food is and China is long. buying wheat from Russia now, but not as much as people think. It's it's not that big a deal, I don't think. Yeah. So let's move on, as you say, to the big one, TikTok. Yes. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the efforts to uh, ban TikTok started here when Trump was president. So, you know, not not very long after TikTok was found and it became a big thing. Um, so they can't stand to see a, a Chinese based or, or, you know, founded in this case company uh, being highly successful. Uh, and, um, you know, it's only intensified from, well, I mean, it kind of, uh, people stopped talking about it for a while. Uh, I guess Trump actually um Got it. Got to the point where TikTok was uh, gonna be banned. I, I guess uh, I forget the details. I assume there was a bill and Trump uh, signed it and so forth. Uh, but the Supreme Court said, "No, no, no, you can't do that." You know, First Amendment and all of that. Um, so uh, it didn't really take off here until act after October seventh because the Israeli lobby started putting enormous pressure on um, you know, the U.S. to uh, you know, uh, reopen that can of worms and uh, ban TikTok. Uh, you know, all along it's been you know, motivated by an effort to undermine China economically and uh, you know, no TikTok issue has nothing to do with China economics and China's technology. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Uh, if you Why think you that, that, it's because that's what the Western media want you to think. This well, is the biggest no. problem we're facing. It has nothing at all to do with China's technology. Um, they know they're not going to get TikTok's algorithm. It's as simple as that. TikTok is not going to give it to them. Simple. Now, the well, owners no. of... Go on. Uh, what I mean is uh, you know, TikTok is a profitable company. Uh, it was founded in China, and I think it's like 20% Chinese-owned now, something like that. It's, um, it's slightly more than 20%. The two yeah. owners have 20%. The employees have 20%. Okay, and, so 40%. All right. Yeah. yeah. So Well, no, don't forget there are 8,400 employees in America who are sharing in that 20% ownership too. Right, right, right. I, okay, mm. good. Yeah, I, I misspoke. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what, what is it, like half of the employees are not Chinese? I forget the exact figure. I'm not sure of the number, but 8,000, 8, I think it's it's either 8,420 or 8,240, but it's it's over 8,000 employees in America are part owners of TikTok and ByteDance, yeah. ByteDance, the parent company. But 60% is owned by international investors, which includes um, people like, Byte, uh, like uh, BlackRock, so you've yeah. got a Vanguard probably in there too. The usual the usual suspects are probably in there raking off their profitability. And um, they will have to have a meeting to decide whether or not. Let's assume that um, House Resolution, I think it's 5721, uh, passes. They will then have to have a meeting to decide what course of action to take. Course of action one, follow the resolution and sell to an American a corporation or an American um, conglomerate. Number two, pull out of America altogether. Number three, fight it through the Supreme Court. Now, if they fight it through the Supreme Court, they are most likely going to win, and that rule will, that law will be scrapped. The question is, do they want to fight it? 
when will this get signed off? It won't get signed off until uh, it it can go. It's been through the Senate. It got to go through the the House. No, Congress. the House. Yeah, it's and been through the House. Uh, been through the House. Passed so, by a vote of something like three hundred and uh, yeah. sixty to fifty-two or something crazy yeah. like that. Um, and once it goes through the second vote, it then goes to sit on the president's desk. He's right. not it, going go to, to the sign Senate. that until the lame duck period. If he gets reelected, if he doesn't get reelected, I think he might even not sign it and leave it for uh, Trump. Trump is saying now that he's not going to ban it. He's right. Uh, right. His he's mind. saying now he's opposed to banning TikTok. Um, but yeah, yeah there's and, uh, and like, and there's already an investment group um, put together by Trump's uh, Treasury Secretary, yes, the you know, former Secretary, mm. uh, tre Treasury Secretary Chu. Uh, buy out uh, China's share of or Chinese investors' share of yeah. TikTok. So, uh, you know, basically, the plan is to threaten TikTok with a ban, and uh, you know, if they don't uh, divest, if excuse me, if uh, ByteDance, the parent company, doesn't divest itself of uh, all Chinese ownership. Um, and if they um, don't agree, then they will be banned. Basically, that that's mm -hmm. what the bill says. Um, and let's see. Okay, let me finally show this. Um, I thought I had it uh, set up so that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so Facebook is considered to be TikTok's biggest competitor. Um, and uh, um, where is it? Uh, oh, gosh, I don't I don't see it in here. Uh, maybe it's in a different article. Oh, uh, let's try this one. Um, yeah, this is uh, one that Ben Norton put out the other day. Um, uh, Anyway, I, I don't know if I... Okay, here we go. Uh, banning TikTok would boost Alphabet, Meta, and Snap. Uh, Forbes chirped excitedly in 2023. Um, for its part, Meta, you know, the parent company of Facebook and uh, Instagram, has spent years lobbying against TikTok. The Washington Post reported in 2020 that Meta is paying one of the biggest Republican consulting firms in the country to orchestrate a nationwide campaign seeking to turn the public against TikTok. So, mm -hmm. you know, essentially, uh, Western uh, you know, or U.S.-based uh, tech giants uh, want to have a monopoly on social media and other technologies. So they would love to have control of TikTok, too. And, um, you know, they, they just... Uh, you come up with all these ridiculous claims that, for instance, that China is using TikTok to, uh, and the Chinese government is using TikTok to spy on Americans and uh, mine their data, which, I mean, I yeah. guess they could, but there's no evidence that they're doing so. They can't. Um, they can't. Yeah. That's a myth. The data is all stored in Texas now by Oracle. Chinese government That's have true. no access to that. Uh, yeah, that's true that it's stored in the U.S. Um, so that's. I, mean, I guess they can still win. spy on people. I don't. I, I don't know, but uh, um, yeah, the data is stored in the United States. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, as many of you probably know, the CEO of TikTok is actually Singaporean. Uh, I guess he's of Chinese descent, but he has nothing to do with China. He's not a Chinese citizen. And so mm -hmm. uh, they hauled him before these hearings in the U.S. Congress. And all these uh, Congress people were saying, so uh, have you ever belonged to the uh, you know, Chinese Communist Party? You know, the Communist yeah. Party of China. That, that was just <laughs> Tom <laughs> Cotton like, and Ted Cruz does the same. Yeah. Mm. I, I, and he's like, Dude, I'm Singaporean. How would I belong to the Chinese Communist Party? Well, he has Party he China? has lived and worked in Beijing. Uh, he went yeah. to work for ByteDance when I mean, he was a capital venturist, and right, uh, right. one of one yeah. of his investments was uh, ByteDance, and he went to work there as a CFO. When ByteDance right. needed a, a CEO for TikTok, they 
they gave him the, the gig. So I mean, he's he's obviously good at his job. Now, here's an interesting thing. I just saw someone. This is this Seymour has just put something up here. The law to ban TikTok gives the POTUS uh, a, a permission, gives him the right to ban any websites. That's not strictly Correct. true, but it's close to true. It's any website controlled by a foreign adversary or an entity. Now, what this means is anyone they don't like, they then just nominate them as foreign adversaries or, or this particular type of entity, and then they can ban it. So right now, what this says is pretty much correct. TikTok yeah. is not the issue. Um, and many people have been saying, well, why don't the Americans just buy VPNs and use TikTok? Have you read the bill? I have. Um, yeah, yeah, I have. But what, uh, why are you bring that up? Okay. The bill has a part two, one B. Part two, one B says, and I'm not, I'm not going to quote the wording because it's just legalese, but effectively it says if you use any other means, if anyone provides somebody with other means to access a banned app, they will be punishable effectively. Now, what this means is Express, uh, Astral, Nord, uh, Surfer, whatever they're called, all of these VPN providers, any of them are based in America, then they will become banned entities. They will wow. get... So if you use a VPN... Now, this is something China <clears throat> is accused of all the time, banning a VPN. I made a video about it the other day. VPNs yeah. are not banned in China. I've got one. No, I not. had policemen in this room a few days ago looking at my YouTube. How does that Why? happen? Well, because they came to, to visit my wife about an entirely different matter. And um, you know, they're very keen to, they were looking around the house. It's because we got a very nicely decorated, it's a very old apartment, which is brand new inside. Literally 100% of my apartment is, it was gutted and rebuilt from the inside. The outside is, even, even the outside of the apartment looks good now. But it's in a building which is 60 years old. And they're, wow, look at this, look at this. And I was busy working. And my wife said, oh, this is where my husband works. And I was on YouTube at the time. I was doing something on YouTube. And the guy said, oh, YouTuber, YouTuber. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm on YouTube. And he's, can I follow you? And he's now following yeah. me on YouTube, a policeman. Oh, awesome, awesome. So he's got a VPN on his phone. I've got a VPN on my computer. And the police didn't care. So yeah, see yeah, the I mean, situation you we do, have uh, here. You could Your do YouTube country. videos if you didn't have a VPN, right? I couldn't do YouTube. I couldn't. I, I can do what we're doing now, yeah. uh, but I couldn't access YouTube. I'm not on my right. VPN to use this this format. And interestingly, I can do this. Um, what, we're on a, a platform called StreamYard now, and I can yeah. use StreamYard on my Chinese mobile phone. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, StreamYard is not a banned app. Many, many yeah. things in the West are not banned. The things that are banned are the things that have misinformation or the things that have data storage, which is not stored in China. Facebook was banned in China. It's the only one. And the reason was uh, 2009. I used to use Facebook when I first came to China. But in 2009, mm -hmm. what happened was Facebook organized, people on Facebook organized riots in Xinjiang and in um, Tibet. Those riots caused the deaths of about 200 people. It was a huge... Oh, wow, I did not know that. My son was actually asking me today uh, like why China uh, censored uh, Facebook. And I, uh, I knew that it had something to do with Facebook, uh, like not agreeing to um, you know, whatever rules the Chinese mm -hmm. government sets for uh, foreign corporations to operate there but i didn't know any okay. details and well, i definitely didn't know that google and the likes youtube is part of google they don't comply with the chinese regulations and they pulled out of china that was their choice uh microsoft does i can use microsoft bing to search anything i want now there are things i can't get through microsoft bing because it complies with chinese laws and it won't give me information on things like tiananmen square because it's misinformation 
So mm -hmm. China's government does everything it can to remove misinformation from the internet inside mm -hmm. of the Great Firewall. And if you want to operate your app inside of China, you must comply with those rules. And this is one that Google said we're not going to do. Facebook had a different situation. They were asked to provide information about how these riots were, were organized through Washington, strangely enough, People in Washington were organizing riots in Tibet and Xinjiang, and those riots resulted in the deaths of many people. So wow. literally, people got away with murder because of Facebook. Now, if Facebook ever says at some stage in the future, we would like to open to the Chinese market, then the Chinese government are going to say, not until you've provided us with the information that we asked for back in 2009. You're banned. Mm -hmm. until you Google can come in tomorrow if they choose to. That's a fact. Bing is yeah. already well, operating. They all could. They all could if I, they I chose. can do Yahoo searches. I can do Bing searches. I can watch CNN. I can watch Fox News. I can watch a lot of stuff. I can't watch BBC. BBC is banned as well because uh, the uh, British government uh, banned CGTN, and that's a, <laughs> a reciprocal tit-for-tat thing, which I personally don't approve of, but I guess I understand the reasoning. If if, you're, yeah. if your people are not allowed to watch our Chinese television, we're not letting people watch your misinformation. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <sighs> yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we going with that? Um, um, the, the VPN thing is the largest issue I see coming out of this bill. There's also another bill. People can look this up. Uh, it's not a House resolution. It's a bill called S-686. And that is a bill that allows for a $250,000 fine for using a VPN to access a banned app. Now, wow. in America, you're not allowed to watch... Um, RT, Russia Today. You're not allowed to watch some Chinese sites. Uh, you, why yeah, are you well, not I mean, allowed? You, you can just not, I mean, you, you can't stream it. You have to, um, or and you know, no cable company offers it. You have to like, go to their website. Right. Or, um, okay. So, okay. But that's effectively a banned app. If you ever need a VPN to go on an app, so, for example, Iranian Iranian uh, apps, Iranian TV, all banned in your country. If you yes. use a VPN, S-686, which is before Congress now, it was submitted, uh, I think, February or March last year. It's been mm -hmm. in, in the pipeline for 12 months. If that gets accepted, then VPNs are banned. Now, effectively, VPNs won't be banned. They're only banned if you're accessing a banned app or a banned platform. Right. So <laughs> it's, it's really, hang on, it's the U.S. Restrict Act, I don't know this I'm not one. Sure what that Using is. a VPN in America is punishable by the U.S. Restrict Act. I uh, don't know. Uh, I mean, that. Not, in general, like they advertise VPNs all the time on uh, YouTube and on uh, yeah various people's shows so vpns are definitely legal here but there there might be some restrictions on what you can do with them i'm not sure i think it's an it's, into that. it's effectively an unpoliceable law to say vpns are banned because the very nature of a vpn is that it prevents you from uh being found so how do you police that when you can't find the people doing it the fact yeah. is if somebody is arrested on a different matter and let's say if, it, if it's it, you know the, the serious ones are things like sedition and and child pornography they're the serious ones mm -hmm. so if someone is arrested on child pornography and they're accessing uh i don't know uh, another country's banned child, all, all child pornography is banned, I think, which certainly should be. And if they're accessing it through a VPN, then there's a further offense. If you're a seditious person and you're planning some kind of treason, you'll probably get arrested for that because of something else that you've done. And then they'll find another offense when they check your devices. But to actually police the use of a VPN, I don't know how possible that is. I, I don't know enough technology to know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, right. But uh, 
back on the issue of uh, like why all of a sudden this is moving forward after it was dead in the water for so long. Uh, you know, again, there, you know, there's all kinds of evidence that uh, the um, conflict in Palestine is the, the the straw that broke the camel's back, so mm. to speak. So, uh, in one thing. Uh, we know is that just about every member of Congress uh, uh, receives donations from the uh, from APAC, the um, Israeli lobby, yeah. Israeli lobby, uh, main Israeli lobby organization here in the United States. So this person says the real reason for banning TikTok is to censor pro-Palestinian voices. Uh, I don't agree with that because uh, you know obviously uh, the, the effort to you know, get at uh, China in some way. Is is a major uh, driving force behind it? Um, I, I, I disagree. I, I disagree. The major driving force behind it might have been that during the Trump era. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree with you there. But it's dropped off the radar, and I think uh, CEO lawyer is probably right that we don't have a TikTok problem. China's TikTok well, is no, better. No, we don't than... have a TikTok problem. We're, we're, yeah, you have a genocide problem. Yeah, and, and people are viewing oh. genocide. Uh, interestingly, I, I was uh, I had an hour to kill last night, and something I very rarely find myself doing. I I was glancing through shorts, and the shorts were interesting because um, let's bring us a little closer together. Uh, the shorts were interesting because I was watching. You know, every second short was an Israeli promotion on YouTube. They were promoting people from Israel and also Ukraine. I was seeing all these Russian tanks being destroyed by Ukrainian drones, and I was meeting all of these lovely ladies who work in the Israeli military. And I'm just scrolling through these thinking, this is how propaganda works. And, mm -hmm. and you know, after an hour or so, I just thought, I can't take any more of this. But it does suck people in. And now I understand yeah. why so many Americans believe it, because the only media they're watching, for mm -hmm. many of them, is YouTube. And the only information they're getting is what YouTube wants you to see. We, yeah. have, another, um, we have another channel. Myself yeah. and two other people have set up another channel called the3ms.social. Now, that channel cannot be found if you go on YouTube and search, not search, enter the... 3ms.social, that's mm -hmm. its proper name, and you have to scroll down 26 sites before you open our site oh because we are pro-China. The 3ms.social wow. is completely, not completely hidden, it's very well hidden. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about in YouTube. In Google, if you search it, you'll get it straight away. But in, mm -hmm. in the YouTube flat platform where we are, the name of our site cannot be found until you scroll through 26 other sites. What's wow. wrong with that? That's crazy. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, saw a poll the other day that found that half of Americans do not know whether uh, Israel has had more people killed or Palestine has had more people killed since October 7th, even though it's obviously astronomically more Palestinians than Israelis, most Americans do not know that. Mm -hmm. um, because <laughs> getting poor information and or they're not, you know, getting much so, information, they're not following it that closely because they're too busy. Hang on a second. Are you talking about combatants? Because Honestly, no. if I mean, it's it's a hundred thousand people are dead now, I think it's certainly well over 70, 75,000. So close to a hundred. Yeah, well, the official figure from the uh, Palestinian Ministry of Health is about thirty-one thousand plus. You know, another eight or so thousand buried in the rubble that almost certainly are dead as well. Uh, but uh, they have very little capacity to you know, count the dead accurately so uh, you know i'm sure it's far more than that um, my understanding but, was what, when, I, when was that information my understanding was much higher than that it was seventy-two thousand uh, at one stage just a few days ago that's injured no i um, thought that was okay all yeah, right uh, 
And there's another group that I think their figure was about 42,000 at this point, but they were counting people buried in the rubble as dead, even though it's something like, you know, high 90s percentage wise who will wind up being, although not all of them. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, my, my point is half of Americans do not know, more than half do not know that there have been tens of thousands of Palestinians versus uh, only, you know, including military people, about uh, 1,500 Israelis killed. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, most, most Americans don't know that. Mm. And yet, you know, most Americans, uh, something like 70%, uh, support a ceasefire. Uh, they just, <laughs> it's just because they're generally in favor of peace. It's not because they know that what Israel is doing is wrong and a genocide and so forth. Mm. So, you know, most young Americans know that. Yeah. Most young Americans are pretty well informed about what's going on because they get their news from social media. And, um, and this is why the TikTok thing is is being banned. Um, Judge Dredd mentioned long ago, and we, I think we all agree with this, YouTube restricts all videos positive on China and promotes all lies about China. It also shadow bans criticism of the USA and let's apply that to Israel, Gaza as well. Whatever right. is the U.S. and Ukraine, whatever is the U.S. narrative is promoted on our social media, but not on TikTok. That is the reason. It has nothing at all to do with technology. That is the reason. Uh, wait, what has nothing to do with technology? Sorry, I was looking for something. The, the TikTok ban, and it's not really called the TikTok ban. I mean, that's that's just the media name for it. It it is it is a restriction on foreign ownership of apps, and right. this is why the, you know they want you to believe this is a ban on TikTok. This is why the media calls it the ban on TikTok. What it really is is not a ban on TikTok at all. This is a ban on foreign owned apps at any mm -hmm. time in the future. Now, here's what's going to happen. We know for a fact that this is going to get passed. We know that. Let's let's be honest. This is going to get passed. Then it will be signed into law. During the, during the lame duck period, it will be signed into law. Then once it's in law, this is not about TikTok. TikTok will do one of three things. It will pull out, it will sell, or it will fight in the court. Now, if it fights in the court, the ban right. should be overturned under the First and Fifth Amendment, because TikTok has never been given any due process. That's right. the Fifth Amendment, and they don't have a presumption yeah. of innocence. They have a presumption of guilt when they yeah. haven't done anything wrong. So it's quite likely that this would get overturned. If it gets overturned, we're okay. But if TikTok just pulls out and says, we're not going to bother fighting this, 170,000 yeah. Americans are going to lose their entertainment, 8,000 will lose their jobs, 7 million will lose their small business access and have to find another way to do business other yeah. than TikTok. Even Biden <clears throat> has a TikTok account. <laughs> yeah, but then, the, the, then this is the most important thing. This bill will never be challenged until they ban some other app in the future. So they are going to use it unless TikTok fights it. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. I, I would rather see TikTok pull out. As someone mentioned, TikTok is only 10%. 10% of, they have 955 million, and it's actually 17% of all of the users are in America. But I'm one of those. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Yeah. I'm well, sitting in China using TikTok, and I'm, I'm going through an American uh, VPN, American VPN server. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I do care for a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, it's a free speech issue. It's a First Amendment issue. Um, you know, people ought to be able to, you know, watch and share content on, you know, social media. And secondly, uh, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I, I don't know what we would consider a lot, but, you know, a significant number of people make all or a lot of their income from TikTok. Or, yep. you know, a big portion of it if they're a business that, you know, markets themselves on TikTok. So this is going to hurt, uh, you know, American businesses and, and business people as well as uh, you know, the general public. Uh, so, so yeah, it would be a terrible thing if it went through. But I think that, I mean, 
you know, certainly the CEO and uh, uh, TikTok in general have said they are going to fight it. And, you know, I, I think they will win uh, again if, uh, you know, th this gets passed and goes to court. Um, so, um, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. But uh, one other thing I wanted to show people, if you could, uh, I, I've got the, a, uh, the article called up. This was out of the Washington Post. Um, <clears throat> and basically the point is that uh, this whole notion that, uh, you know, that TikTok is being uh, used to promote pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel views uh, to an extent that's not true of other social media apps like Facebook or uh, X or whatever is it, simply not true. Uh, um, where, where is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, so Facebook and Instagram... TikTok's U.S.-based rivals uh, show a remarkably similar gap between pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian uh, uh, views. So on Facebook, the hashtag Free Palestine hashtag is found on more than 11 million posts, 39 times more than those with the Stand with Israel hashtag and similarly on Instagram. Uh, so, so these uh, figures are, I forget exactly what, I don't think they gave the exact figure for TikTok, but you know it's pretty similar. So, um, you know, the, certainly uh, the fact that our Congress is so captured by the Israeli lobby and Israel is lobbying very hard on this, uh, you know, has uh, something a lot to do with why this is being pushed so hard right now. But uh, the, the claim that uh, you know people are uh, getting more pro-Palestinian. Uh, anti-genocide information from TikTok than from other social media apps is just not true because regardless of what social media <clears throat> app people use, they can see, you know, what Israel is doing with their own okay. eyes and the vast majority of people are going to be against it regardless of what social media they're on. Let me correct you on this because what you're showing us there is correct. This is how they misinform us, Right. What you're showing us there is the number of hashtags. Now, okay, what they have the not shown, hashtag. what they have not shown is the number of views. It doesn't matter if you hashtag something, even if if it's being suppressed. So let's say there are six million hashtags on Facebook. That means six million people have have done something there, or, or uh, th there is a huge movement. But then, Facebook can suppress those hashtags. TikTok right. does not suppress the hashtags. That's so true. the views are what's important. If there were 6 million views on Facebook, sorry, 6 million hashtags on Facebook and 6 million hashtags on TikTok, there would be 40, 50, 100 million views on TikTok and 7 million views on Facebook. That's the information yeah. they're not giving you. And so that's why TikTok is getting banned and not Facebook. This is the information that they're not going to give you. I, I okay, bet well, you that's not the only the... reason why, of course, because TikTok is a you know, foreign company with some American ownership. And no, you, is... you're getting you're getting bogged down in the wrong picture, Jeff. The picture is not that it's a foreign owned company. The picture is that they can't control that foreign owned company. They yeah, can right, of course. control. The view. It's not going to change the number of hashtags for free people, free Palestine. It's not going to change the number right. of people who view Palestine as a problem. It's not going to change any of that. But what they're going to try and do is change public opinion. So all of a sudden, on TikTok, we will. If it was owned by an American conglomerate or an American uh, syndicate, then we will start to see many more pro-Gaza, uh, pro-Israel, and even if there are six million pro-Palestine tags, we will not see them. They're there, but we won't be showing them. As a user, we have to go look for them. That's the difference. It's not about who owns it. It's about who can control it. So let's not get bogged down in the number of hashtags, and because that's what they want you to do. They've given you your argument. They've given you your defense. And they're saying this has nothing to do with TikTok and Gaza because look at the hashtags on Facebook. But what's the views? I bet you they're not showing the views in there. Um, 
Yeah, they, they do. Uh, um, videos with a hashtag. There you go. Uh, it, it both received about 2 billion views, uh, hashtags Israel and Palestine. On TikTok in the United States within the past 30 days, Free Palestine has appeared on 233,000 posts, 38 times more than videos tagged with Stand with Israel. Uh, let's see. Uh, on TikTok. The similarity yeah. in total views suggests that the average uh, hashtag Israel video was viewed more often. Uh, this is so even on um, TikTok, uh, you know, pro Israel uh, posts are being viewed disproportionately more, even though there's a lot more pro Palestine posts. Um, uh, you know, and actually wow. activists, you know, uh, for Palestinian uh, liberation have criticized TikTok. Uh, for having a pro-Israel bias. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, TikTok said it had removed uh, uh, more than 925,000 videos for promoting Hamas or otherwise violating the app's policies around violence, hate speech, et cetera, et cetera, uh, between October 7th and That's now. TikTok complying uh, with the law, yeah. Yeah, TikTok and Meta both banned content promoting Hamas. Um both companies have also been accused by pro-Palestinian supporters of skewing their content in favor of Israel, the opposite of what TikTok's critics have accused it of. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, bottom line is that their argument, I mean, obviously, you know, they, they shouldn't be trying to uh, censor pro-Palestinian opinion anyway, but their argument that... Uh, they would be able to suppress pro-Palestinian content simply by singling out uh, TikTok for banning, um, you know, isn't supported by... Yeah. Uh, TikTok is a family site, Jeff. It has, yeah. um, it has its own guidelines and its own standards. Uh, right. You're not allowed to show nudity on TikTok, the same as you're not allowed to show nudity on um, uh, YouTube. Facebook. You yeah. are allowed to show violence on TikTok and you are allowed to show it on YouTube, but usually comes with a warning and it gets suppressed. That's normal right. when things like that happen. Yeah, what TikTok is not doing is it's not suppressing legitimate Gaza concerns. What YouTube is doing, and I know this for a fact it's doing it to me, is yeah. it's suppressing legitimate it is suppressing legitimate anti-narrative concerns uh, one of the narratives is gaza and israel the one of the narratives is china one is ukraine mm -hmm. so we've got right. these different narratives which are being suppressed but tiktok is not suppressing them what it is doing is it is actually reducing the number of things that we can see because they breach tiktok's guidelines themselves so mm -hmm. i think let, let's not get too bogged down in the Washington Post's defense because that is designed well, to make us think, oh, it's not about that. It's about technology. It's not about technology. It's not about China. Okay, it's about but the reason I showed that article is that, you know, even the Post is uh, indicating that, uh, uh, I mean, there, there's more pro-Palestinian than uh, pro-Israel content on all the social media sites, not just TikTok. That's so because more against. people more people actually feel that way. Contrary right, exactly. to what the government would like us to think, your government and even mine uh, would like us to think more people want this to stop than continue. Simple. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's, I mean, the bottom line is <laughs> people who... Uh, view uh, TikTok content in the United States are largely the same people who produce the content. Mm -hmm. So it's not coming from foreign countries. You know, it's coming from people in the United States who are already uh, pro-Palestine, who want to promote their uh, views. Um, yeah. And so this idea that there's foreign influence driving this is just you know, complete bullshit. So... Yeah, China is very neutral. I mean, it's not neutral. It, it is pro the UN stance on Gaza. That's what China is. It's pro the UN stance. China supports the UN stance on it. And, and it has done since the day it came into the United Nations uh, more than 50 years ago. It's 
uh, about 50 years ago, maybe a little less than that, but it supported the UN stance. Yeah. And still does. And that UN stance currently, until it changes, that UN stance is the, uh, the, the two state solution. And I personally think it may be too late for that. Mm. Anyway, we're coming up towards the end. I wanted to touch on Princess Kate. Do you know anything about the Princess Kate story? Uh, well, I, I guess uh, it turns out she had cancer, but they were hiding that for a long time and nobody knew what was going on. It was assumed maybe she was anorexic or whatever. Um, but no, that, that was that was Diana was anorexic. That was, I think that was one of the stories. One yeah. of the stories was that she'd been stabbed by uh, her husband's lover. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> another story was that she was dead. She's already dead. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and the, well, maybe she is. <laughs> and, and what I, I mean, my, my point for raising this is this. Media throughout the world, but particularly in the British Commonwealth, has had a field day with the Kate story. Kate disappeared from the face of the earth. She went into hospital for what was considered to be a minor, pre-prepared, everything was going to be okay, and she'd be mm -hmm. out in a couple of days. But it turns out she wasn't. So the conspiracy theorists all over the world, my wife was asking me here in China the other day, what do you know about Princess Kate? Uh, is she dead? Has she been stabbed? I don't know. <laughs> And I went looking, and sure enough, there's all these theories about what it was. And then came the International Women's Day fake picture. Well, all she was trying to do was to show a nice picture of her family on this particular day. And she did that, and she got pilloried for it because it was an, a, a digitally altered picture. Now, she's, being, she's been going through radiation and chemotherapy. Her skin is probably blistered and blotched. Her yeah. hair probably partially fallen out. She may have lost a couple of teeth. I don't know. I know people who've been through this and it's not nice. Um, my yeah. son went through all of this a few years ago and it was not nice. He looked horrible. He looked older than his grandfather when he was wow. 39 years old. Literally, wow. that's, what, that's what chemo, radiation and all these things do for you or do to you. So she's trying to avoid that. My point is not about that. It's about where people get their news. And every single story that I saw for a period of about three weeks about the royal family was wrong. Everything was wrong. It was all supposition. All of the headlines ended in a question mark. And none of them told the truth. That is what causes us to misunderstand the news because we believe the story we want to believe. China is 100% everything you ever read about China is 100% wrong or 98% wrong. The rest of it is this speculation and misinformation and Kate is the perfect example of how they do it. So anybody who saw any news in the last two months, six weeks or more, about Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, has seen how the media manipulates our emotions, how the media tells us what they want us to think, and how they speculate on things so that we form an opinion. Now, the thing about China, with Kate, it came out. The truth has come out. Now, she mm -hmm. may die. I don't know how serious her cancer is. She may die. And if she does die, they will announce that. But that's how we finalize those stories. Tibet has been going on for over 70 years. The lies and speculation about what's happening in Tibet have been going on for 70 years. Hong Kong for the last five years or eight years. Uh, Xinjiang for 10 or 12 years. Taiwan, much more recently, China is, could invade Taiwan. Yes, they could, but they're not going to. So you see how this speculation drives public opinion into a place they don't belong. And that's why I wanted to raise the Kate story. We've been driven and manipulated into believing something is happening inside of the royal family by speculation, exactly the same as China. That's the important point. Somebody was uh, 
just commenting they had heard that there were places in the U.S. that didn't even have uh, Wi-Fi or uh, yeah. you know, like Ethernet uh, dial-up. I haven't heard that, but I do know. Um, yeah. I do know that there are places uh, in Mississippi and I guess um, you know some Indian reservations and uh, various other rural, mainly rural areas that are so poor that they don't even have running water. So, um, you know, there, yeah, there's definitely some third world like conditions or you know global south like conditions uh, in parts of the U.S. This is interesting that you say this because I've traveled extensively through rural China. Now, there are no villages anywhere in China that don't have electricity, water, running water, and a sealed road going in or out or both of yeah. them if, they, if it's a go through. If it's in a mountain, you have a sealed road going into it and then coming out the same road. But uh, most of them have a, a road going in and out. Every single village, every village in China has 5G now, including base camp on Mount Everest. Well, yeah. I go. mean, you know, China has uh, you know, eliminated extreme poverty. The U.S. has not. You know? Well, in fact, the U.S. is going deeper and deeper into poverty. It's uh, uh, 2022, it was 11%. It's now over 12%. You're, you're going a, every year. You're going one percent more into poverty in the U.S. Something yeah. going badly uh, wrong with your system. Between, <coughs> uh, it fluctuates between like ten and fifteen percent, um, mm -hmm. and of course, it's much higher for certain groups of people of color, uh, the main ones, and uh, um, you know, it's higher okay. for this, children. This is an interesting point from Jim. I agree with you. The U.S. is huge, not you, huge. There are plenty of places without a cell tower in 100 miles. Maybe that's, yeah. that's true. I've traveled across the Gobi Desert, the Tengeli Desert, and the Taklamakan mm -hmm. Desert in China on a bicycle and never been out of telephone, cell phone contact. Never. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was just in the gym on campus, uh, you know, Indiana University here in Bloomington today, uh, and notice that I got one bar reception inside the gym, like, a, you know, smack in the middle of town. Uh, uh, that so maybe because patches. of the structure of the building. I mean, let, let, there are buildings here. I lived in an apartment that had very poor reception. But if I went to the balcony, no problem at all. But the building yeah. was built of solid concrete, steel reinforced. Uh, and you know, it was a very, very solid building. And so, yeah, that can happen. Uh, but yeah, inside, inside of buildings in China, you have Wi-Fi in everyone, and even elevators yeah. and car parks. Your phone yeah. will work. Yeah, yeah. No, mm. I don't think that's. I don't think it's the building was the problem because, uh, uh, you know, when I went, you know, drove away and went up the street, it was still not very good. So right. there's like just. And it depends on what company you're with. I'm with T-Mobile because, uh, you know, it's very cheap. Uh, and, you know, they do have a pretty extensive network. But, uh, you know, at least uh, in some parts of the country, they, there's still places where it's a little spotty. And, you know, I, I don't think that's true in China. So, no. Also, there's an interesting thing. If, if, you, deduct, um, if you deduct Hawaii from America, China is bigger. If you add Taiwan to China, China is bigger than America. They are that close in size. Um, I mean, no. I, everyone in China adds Taiwan anyway. Uh, but uh, Americans, when they draw a map, sometimes leave Taiwan off and say, this is not China. If you want to draw a map of China, it should have Taiwan and Hainan yes. Islands. They're both provinces yes. of China. But um, if you, as long as you count them, China is bigger. If you say, well, let's let's discount Taiwan because it's politically different. Okay, I can I can get that. So I don't agree with it, but I'll get it. I accept it. And we take Taiwan away, and you leave Hawaii and Alaska in the United States. America is bigger. They are that mm -hmm. close in terms of size. They, yeah, they really are very very close. Hmm. Anyway, we've got to an hour and thirty, and I think it might be time to go. I can yeah. hear it. Um, okay. 
it's ten forty four and i just I, I just heard my wife putting the kettle on, which means coffee, so oh, okay. second coffee yeah. of the day coming up and okay. and by oh, the way, I'm one of going the... in a different direction than you I'm gonna have uh, more sedative uh stuff you're going to bed. <laughs> have you seen my new yeah. cup? no huh. that's funny. It's funny because so many people think this is banned. My wife bought this on Taobao for me as a joke. <laughs> the balloon and the poo. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah, and this is this is a Tom and Jerry cup. Huh? Tom, Jerry. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, Sync Master, we're going to end sometime. So we have to end. We have to bring everything to an end. But we will, um, thank you, James, uh, Kevin, I will enjoy my coffee. We will be back in probably a month or six weeks. We do this kind of, I, I, I guess, about twice every three months. We don't do it every month. Uh, but maybe we could set aside a time in, in a month and do it again because it is good yeah. to catch up and just discuss both sides. Um, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, you know, we should try to do it every month. We may not get it right on the nose every time, but we've been doing it pretty close, you know. Yeah. Ne never more than a month and a half, but usually every month, so we can yeah. keep doing that. This, this is just one more point about uh, mobile. China is a cashless yeah. society, and people still use some people still use cash, so it's getting harder. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, Britain, China, which is also what I am, a Britain, China, I think we have to evolve. I, yeah. I I still carry a wallet when I'm traveling. I don't carry it when I'm in my local hometown, but I carry it if I travel. I carry a wallet. It's got my credit card. Now, well, what if you have? What if your phone reception goes out? Though? <laughs> never goes out. Uh -huh. It never goes out. Yeah. <laughs> it's never yeah, happened. I mean, you know, it very rarely really does here, but um, yeah. Not even I, mean, I, I I use uh, either my phone or debit card to pay for pretty much everything. I hardly ever carry cash. Well, the first smartphone that I had was a Sony Ericsson, and I upgraded it to an Apple iPhone 4. In fact, I was given an iPhone 4 as a gift. I would not have bought one. iPhone 4? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, oh, that's that's how long ago it was is what I'm saying. Oh, and I oh, have oh okay. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, not, I'm using a Vivo now. This is a Chinese brand Vivo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very, very good. Like a Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, Honor. There's a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, I have not, in my entire period of being in China, uh, using a smartphone, ever had a day where I did not have full coverage and access to my money. Uh, it wow. happened in Australia a little while ago. Uh, Optus dropped out. We call it Droptus as a joke in Optus. <laughs> uh, it dropped out, and um, a lot of people couldn't access their their money. Simple, they couldn't. Act. They're normally using their yeah. phone. ATMs wouldn't work, so they couldn't get cash because the ATMs were using right. Optus. So that was a huge problem. And, and that, for some reason, they, a lot of Australians are very anti a digital currency because it will replace. It's going to replace the proper currency. Uh, and they, they, most, most Australians are quite happy to have digital money, but they don't want it as the only option, which is what the banks are pushing for. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I, mean, I like it, but yeah, there is the issue of well, what if something goes wrong? Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like digital money yeah. a lot. The worst that can happen in China is you lock yourself inside. You lock yourself out with your phone inside the house. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. true. <laughs> yeah, that's actually happened. I think we've all been through that. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for join joining us. We we yes, went up great to comments, the, everybody, uh, uh, and. Uh, just one more thing. If you, I, I know that the vast majority of you are watching this on Jerry's channel, but could you please, please, please go to my channel and give this video a like? Give it a um, like at least. Click yeah. on it so that it'll play. So I'll get the view credits and give it a like. And uh, let's see. Um, I... The bitter pill. Yeah, just at the bitter pill, youtube.com yeah. slash at the bitter pill. Yeah, um, do Jeff a favor and give him a like, it can't hurt. All right, everybody, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, and I'll see you in about you. a month. Bye all for right. now. All right, bye, everybody. Thank you for all the questions and your time this morning, this evening.
wherever you are. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I don't see the. You've got the button to end the stream. So 